Hello everyone, welcome to this session of SNAP 2019 strategy. This year's SNAP is going to be conducted on 15th of December from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. When the SNAP notification was out, everyone was shocked. For the first time, SNAP don't have a GK section. And that is something difficult to digest because SNAP is an exam which was always, always, always had a GK section. So whenever one think about SNAP, the first thing that comes into mind is you need to prepare for GK. Now this year, there is no GK section. So what has changed this time? The other three sections are same. You have Cond and DI section, you have a reasoning section, you have a, a verbal section. So what has changed? If you have observed the SNAP over the last 2-3 years, the SNAP paper has undergone several changes. In terms of number of questions, keeps on changing. Last year, each and every section had one mark and two mark question, including GK. The level of difficulty, I would say, has gone high as compared to what it used to be over four years, five years back. We don't know what is going to be this year. Because this year, in con section, there are a total of 40 questions, out of which 35 questions will be one, one marks. And the remaining five questions, which they term as a special question, will be for two marks. Now, what are the special questions? You have to type in the answer. So, for example, if I ask you, what is 7 into 3? That's 21. So, you have to actually type 2121. There is no MCQs. Now, the major change was observed in English, that is verbal ability, reading comprehension and logical reasoning section. But each and every question is of 1.5 marks. No one mark, no two mark. Each and every question is for 1.5 marks. Now, why this change? No one knows. Is the difficulty of paper going to be high? Or maybe they want to increase the number of students who are from non maths background. No one knows. Probably on 15th of December, we would come to know that whether the paper was easy or it's difficult. What was the motive behind changing this? Okay. So let's go with some assumption that SNAP 2019 paper, the difficulty would remain more or less same as it had been over the last few years. Now, if you look at the last year's cutoff of SIBM was around 72 marks. Now, let us assume that out of the 72 marks, a student scored around 12 marks in GK, which means he or she scored 60 marks in other three sections. Great. Now, let's assume that out of 60 marks, he or she scored 20 marks in math section and 40 marks in English and logic put together. Now, if the difficulty of the paper is going to remain the same as it was last year, it means out of all those 40 marks that a student scored last year in English and LR, now he will be scoring 60 marks because each question is for 1.5 marks, right? And he will still score those 20 marks which he scored last year. So, it will be 60 plus 20 that adds up to 80. Now, there's one more catch here. We remove GK section where a student scored 12 marks. If he scored 12 marks, reading 25 questions and attempting some of them, he would have at least spent 10 minutes, minimum of 10 minutes. Now, in those 10 minutes, a student probably can solve more around 4 to 6 questions and score around 5 or more marks, which means we are looking at 80 plus 5, around 85 marks cut off for SIBM, which was last year 72. Provided the premise here was the paper, the level of difficulty of the paper would remain the same. Correct. Now, what if there are major changes in the structure of the paper as well, the type of question? Then right now, you cannot predict what would be the cutoff. A student will have to have enough practice of mock papers 
so that can change the strategy accordingly depending upon the difficulty of the paper on that day. So what I want to say is, for example, because logic section and verbal section is for 1.5 marks, let's say the difficulty of the paper has gone high. Now here student has to smartly select a section whether to go and attempt one mark question of corn which are easy or to attempt 1.5 mark questions of English and LR which are moderately difficult as compared to corn question. So one has to be very smart in selecting the question. Right? Generally, SNAP used to be a very traditional exam, very traditional paper. I mean, you'll have, you can well well prepared or assume that this is going to be the question paper, this other type of question which is going to be there. So, historically, SNAP will never ask a question in mass which are based on function or higher mass, uh, inequalities, maxima, minima, they would probably not ask. Okay. The more weightage is given to arithmetic, around 8 to 9 questions would be from arithmetic, around 5 to 6 questions would be from geometry, 3 to 4 was, would be from numbers, around 5, 6 from algebra, that is equation and quadratic, and around 3 to 5 questions put together from permutation, combination, probability, logarithm, progression put together. So, if you are good at arithmetic number than you know algebra, probably 20 questions is fairly manageable. I mean, one can easily attempt 20 odd questions. And you'll also have around 5 to 10 questions of data interpretation. Last year, SNAP didn't have data sufficiency, but some, I mean, you know, in the earlier year, they used to ask data sufficiency question as well. So, attempting 20 questions in SNAP con section should not be a difficult task. If you are good at maths, probably one can attempt around 28 to 30 odd questions and can move ahead to the next section. Now coming to verbal ability in reading comprehension section, there, are, there will be around 8 to 10 questions of reading comprehension which are generally easy and very straightforward. Maybe one or two questions would be inference based, most of the questions would be straightforward historically. Now this year, because the question weightage is increased to 1.5 marks there are chances that maybe some questions might get difficult again you never know okay the remaining questions you know would have synonyms antonyms analogies uh, will have fill in the blank would have uh, grammar usage based questions error detection you have okay uh, you will have para jumbles you will have spelling errors rectifying the uh, spellings or guessing the right spelling out of the given four options. Those are this is a general type of questions which comes in SNAP. Okay. Now, if you are good at vocabulary and grammar, you would have understood that around more than 30 questions one can easily attempt, probably in around 20, 22 odd minutes, if you are good in vocabulary and grammar. Probably you will not even take around 22 minutes. 30 questions of vocabulary grammar should be done in around 17, 18 odd minutes. Right? And the remaining RC, two RCs could be solved in next, let's say around 15, 16 minutes. So that would sum up to around 32 to 35 minutes for the entire verbal section if you are attempting. Now coming to logical reasoning section. Again, it's very traditional paper where you'll have some questions on puzzles, arrangement. You'll have around two sets of puzzles, arrangement. Then you'll have sets on uh, input output that is data structure. You'll have sets of uh, questions on coding, decoding, direction sense. Then you have blurred relation. Uh, you'll have number series, odd man out, analogies. All the types of questions that you can think of logical reasoning will be part of this section apart from around 8 to 10 odd questions on verbal reasoning, verbal logic, which will include syllogs, which will have statement argument, statement assumption conclusion, strength and weaken type of question. So again, if the paper pattern is going to remain the same, or the type of question remains the same, then this section is generally considered to be a cakewalk, which means this set of questions could be easily attempted in around 45 to 50 minutes. Let's say even if you spend 50 minutes in reasoning, 
and you spend 35 minutes in verbal ability attempting everything which means 50 and 35 that adds up to 85 minutes in 85 minutes you have attempted 105 marks questions which means now you have 35 more minutes to attempt a quant section which i'm sure in 35 minutes if you just solve the easy ones the sitters in 35 minutes around 18 to 20 qu odd questions are fairly possible so this is how ideally you should be spending your time if you are not good with quant. But let's say you are good with quant, then probably spend, rather than spending 35 minutes, probably you can spend around 40-42 minutes and try and attempt around 25 to 28 questions and the remaining time you can attempt LR and verbal section. Now having said these two strategies, if the difficulty of the paper remains the same, then ideally you should go and attempt the verbal and reasoning section first because it has more weightage per question. But you have to be very choosy because if 1.5 marks is given for question, the penalty also increases. Penalty remains 0.25 for one mark question. For two mark question, it becomes 0.5 and for 1.5 mark question, it becomes 0.375. That's one fourth. So you are getting 1.5, but at the same time, the penalty is also high. So you cannot simply bluff here, especially in English. If you are confused between two options, probably now you will not be in a state to take a risk because more marks are at stake. The penalty is high. That's all from SNAP strategy session. Thanks for watching the video and all the best for your exam.